Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force and today we will be checking out Divinity Original Sin. Uh, this game's launching in about a week and a half from now, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you what this title is all about. Uh, there is a lot to this game, so expect this to probably be a little bit of a longer video. Uh, what this is, it's a turn-based RPG with the emphasis on RPG. This game is first and foremost about role playing. There's a lot of it to be done between character interaction, uh, talking with other NPCs, and even just I interacting with the environment. I would I would call I would call this game dense. So much so that this playthrough right now, I'm about I think 9 or 10 hours in. I have just gotten to the point where I'm about to leave the main town. There's so much to do in this town. There's so much to interact with, uh, so many NPCs to talk to. And uh, here's another thing. This is old school, all right? There are no markers telling you where to go for your quest. There is no, uh, there's no voice acting. It's 100% text-based reading, so you'll be reading through books. You'll be reading and talking to NPCs. Uh, for example, I could open this book here, and there'll be some things to read, and we can... Um, oh, this one, actually. This one doesn't have anything. I think some a lot of these books allow you to flip through the pages. Apparently, I'm opening up the ones that don't that don't have that though. Adventurer's Field Guide. Oh no, okay, I'm sorry. These are just all things to learn. But we've got things like this, like the, a book where it's a pirate's life. We can read through multiple things, and it's just <laughs> it's a dense game. I'm, I've really been enjoying. It. I mean, I suppose that that would go without saying since I spent like all of yesterday playing this game. So let me just, let's just jump right into it. It's dense, this is gonna be a pretty pretty long video, so let's get things started. Uh, first of all, you start off with a party of two. Uh, you can completely customize your characters. We're not gonna go too deep into it right now, but I'll just give you a quick overview. Uh, things like strength, dexterity, intelligence, constitution, speed, and perception, all of this affects uh, sort of combat-based things, your health, the amount of turns that you have, your starting initiative and the turn-based combat. Uh, so you're moving around freely within the world and interacting with things. In fact, you can even move things, like I can pick up this barrel and move it over here. I could smash this barrel if I wanted to and um, <laughs> I could grab this broom and say I don't want this broom on the rack, I want this broom on the floor. And <laughs> um, so, so you're moving around normally within the game but then when you get into a combat scenario it moves into turn based. Things like sight, hearing, movement, initiative, uh, there's experience, what you need for the next level. Here's some uh, combat based stats like damage, armor rating, uh, resistance to the different elements that they have, your vitality, action points for combat. Uh, there's full gear system, so you're going to acquire loot, different rarities and stuff, uh, different types of abilities that basically determine what your character can do. So I'm specialized in two-handed weapons. And then for my skills so far, I've only focused on man at arms, which is like the melee warrior combat skill. However, when I level up and I get more available points, I could put a point into a Geomancer, and I could get some Geomancer skills. I could put a point into Witchcraft, which would get, allow me to summon spiders and get some poison skills, things like that. There's also talents, and these are like special passives, if you will. So I've got Bully, which lets me do 50% more damage to opponents that are slowed, crippled, or knocked down. I've got Opportunist, which means if someone runs away from me, I have an attack of opportunity in which I can basically get a free hit on them without using up uh, anything. I get extra skill points from that. There's all sorts of stuff, though. I could get Lone Wolf, which would mean I can't have any companions, but I have an 80% bonus to my base vitality, uh, bonus to start recovery, maximum action points, all of that. And you can see there's just a whole slew of things in terms of these like special perks you can get for your different characters. And all of that is for all characters in your party. Every character in my party, I've got three. You start off with two, and then you can pick up companions. I believe it's a max of up to four, but you start off with two, and you can make it however you want. It can be male, female, both male, female, female, and you can completely customize the type of character that they are, uh, whether it's a warrior, a cleric, a battle mage. You've got full reign of options. It's cr The customization is unreal. Uh, uh, in terms of building your character from the start. And e each of your characters have their own inventory. As you can see, I'm cycling through them here. So you can see their different inventory, uh, what they've got stowed over here. They're different... Um you know, there are different abilities in terms of where they've got their skill points set. And this, again, this determines the type of skills that you can have access to. So for my caster here, who is Scarlet, uh, I've spent a point in Geomancer, um, Hydro-Sophist, and uh, Pyro... 
pyrokinetic. Wow, my ability to read. So I'm basically, I'm a caster. I've got some healing abilities, things like that. And I'll show you her skill bar here. You can see she's got all these different flare, slow current, minor heal, staff of the Magus. I've got a uh, rain ability. This is, uh, this is so cool. Let me show you this rain ability. I'm going to go outside real quick. So it's a clear, beautiful day outside here in this town. But if I want to, I can make it rain. And this quite it's going to quite literally... I just picked up this spell, so I absolutely love it. It's going to quite literally cause it to rain. Puddles will form on the ground. So notice this puzzle forming right here. All these guys are now with the wet debuff. So if I electrocute them, they take more damage. But check this out. There's a puddle on the ground. I've got an electric attack on my staff. I can... Oh, the puddle disappeared. Now oh, the puddle disappeared. Okay, well, I'm going to do this quickly this time. Okay, so we're going to recast the rainstorm. Here we go. Recast the rainstorm. A new puddle should appear. There we go. And now I'm going to cast an electric attack at the puddle. This is going to electrocute the puddle. And now anyone who walks across it, so I could have one of my characters walk into it, a friend or foe, anyone who walks into this, will become stunned. And now all of a sudden she's stunned. And if we were in a combat scenario, I would try to use that to my benefit. Um, but there's a full there's a full reign of interaction between the elements. So a great example is if there is fire on the ground, I could just cast the rainstorm and it would douse the fire. Or if there's a poison, there there's there's some instances where there will be poison traps. If you if you cast fire at the poison, it's going to basically pop it and blow it all up and then it'll disappear and you'll be able to get safe passage from there on out. Um, th <laughs> this game is just, there's some really, it's dense. Like I said, it's dense. There's a lot going on. So I showed you uh, I showed you this a moment ago, how you can move things around. And different characters have different strength levels uh, or different capabilities. So my warrior, he's all about strength, right? But he is not strong enough to move this uh, evidence chest. The evidence chest is just too heavy. I can't throw that. I can't throw that far. Now, he can move these barrels. All right. He can move the broom. He can move, uh, if I want to move this bread, I, he can move this bread. Move it right over there. There you go. Or he can pick up that bread, although it's considered stealing because it's not our bread. We're just going to do it anyways. Um, but see, he, even though he's a warrior and he's specced into strength, he's not strong enough to move these chests. It's just too heavy. Can't throw it that far. However, my sorcerer, she doesn't have a lot of strength, but you know what she does have? She has telekinesis, Kyle. She's got telekinesis, Kyle. And that allows her to move with her mind. There it is. I was waiting for that animation to pop up. With her mind, she is able to move objects. Not because she's super strong, but because she's super magical. She can't throw it quite that far. You can throw it over here, though. And then we can bring it back over here. Not enough space? There's enough space. Don't tell me there's not enough space. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, pretty much anything that you can interact with, if there's anything that you could pick up or whatever, you're also able to move it around the environment. Or again, you can just put it in your inventory. So I could just pick up this wooden shield and there you go, it's mine. So these things are, aren't mine. Th these were. This is considered stealing, okay? And I'm, I'm able to do it safely, basically, because there's no one uh, in my line of sight. You can also talk, you can have the NPCs converse with each other. Uh, you can have them answer some questions. So this is a companion companion that we picked up, uh, this particular lady, Medora. Uh, Scarlet and Roderick were my two main characters. Those are the default names of the male and female characters. But again, you can customize their names, their sex, their whatever, you can customize everything. Um, but I can ask her questions like, she's very suspicious of anything magical because she is a brute force warrior. So you'll be like, why are you so suspicious of wizards? And she'll tell us, oh, well, you know, wizards, very surprising. Uh, 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 I just don't trust them in my old age. Uh, I've seen too many bad wizards. It's been a fish. What'd she say? I don't even know. But yeah, you can have full on conversations and the different characters, they have relationships based on decisions that you make. So I can actually show you that in a, in, in a moment. But we're going we're gonna to stay in here because I want to show you um, I want to show you what a lot of what there is to do in this place. So, like, you know, we already know about moving stuff. You can, I, I just, I love the fact that you can just, oh, and I'm sorry, I didn't even mention this before. You can also, um, you can also, like, rotate stuff. So you can change the direction. So if you want to set up, if you want to set up this bench in a certain way, like if I wanted to put the bench over here, right next to this, um, if I want to put the bench right here, if I wanted to have it blocking or whatever, you could, it's just, I just think it's crazy the amount of customization um, that you're able to do within the environment. I really, it's just a lot of fun, even though there's not much, it's not like super useful, 
There's not much to come of it, but it's neat. Okay, so I want to talk with you about the thieving. There is a, a robbery system in this game in which you can steal stuff. Now, if someone sees you steal something, they're, they're going to yell at you, and you're going to lose reputation. However, you can circumvent that with the sneaking system. So, for example, if I try to go right here and take from this container, he would yell at me. He would be very mad at me, um, and I'm going to do that. I'll do that with just a single character, okay? So I'm gonna de-chain, and the interface is uh, kinda neat because these guys will follow each other while they're chained like this, while they're linked, but if you pull someone apart, you can then click on them and move them independently here. So I'm gonna have her steal something just straight in line, I'm gonna have her attempt to take something of his, okay? Just right, right where he's uh, able to see me, okay? So he's like, hey, whoa, 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 excuse me, would you mind not handling things that aren't yours? And I'm like, okay, sorry about that. Now, we lost some reputation with him there uh, as a result of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do a quick reload prior to the rep reputation loss because I don't actually want to have that happen. So if you try to take something in front of somebody without d sneaking, then they're going to be like, that's not cool, don't do that. However, there is... A stealth system in this game so what I can do is I can have him I can pull a character off and I can have him engage in conversation so I can be like hey chum how are you and then what I can do is stealthily go to another character these two are talking right now I can go to another character go over here and go into sneak mode in which I hit C now once you hit C anything in the gray area and I can switch the camera views Anything in the gray area is undetected. Anything in the bright area is detected. So if I try to sneak in the lit area, it's going to say sneaking failed. Whoa, you did a bad job of sneaking. He can clearly see you. So what I want to do is go to, a, go to an area that's outside of his vision cone. And it literally depends on where he's facing. It quite literally depends on where he's facing. That's where his vision cone is. I can go outside of his vision cone, and now I could take this key. Boop. And he didn't see me because I am in stealth mode and I am not within his vision cone. So I could also take these empty potion flasks, which I could use those, and I'm gonna take murder mystery for dummies, and that's it. I think that that's fine. So then we're gonna pop out sneak mode, and we'll go back to our guy who's in conversation. We're like, hey, uh, um, uh, uh, tell me about yourself. Oh, that's cool. All right, I'll see you later. <laughs> It's so cool, like it's very, very cool. I, I was super surprised that this game even has a stealth system, but the fact that it's vision cone based and it actually like, it actually seems legit, like it actually kind of works. Uh, <laughs> all right, so now with that key, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down into the basement here. Oops, take my leave, okay, sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna go down into the basement here. And now with that key that we just acquired, I can break into this cell. So there's some stuff in here that I would like to get. There's an adventurer's field guide as well as some bread, so I could take that. But again, you do have to be aware of the vision cones of people. So if I break off here and try to go into, I can go into stealth mode, and these guys are facing away, but so I could break in right now. I want to do it with Scarlet though. I'd want to put her in this. So we've got both these guys in stealth, but I love how they're just like chilling in some rocks, by the way. And then I'm going to have her engage in conversation because I don't want this guy to actually accidentally turn around. I don't want this guy to actually turn around and face my characters who are trying to sneak in. So so then I can go like this, open the door. Whoop. All right, sweet, safe and sound. And now that we're in here, we grab the adventurer's field guide, grab the bread. And now I can take, uh, now that I have the adventurer's field guide, I can read it. And there you go. True survivor. Actually, I might have already, uh, I might have already read that. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I think it's very neat uh, that the system even exists and that it's, it's like pretty. It's, it's. This isn't a stealth game, but it's got stealth mechanics, which is kind of cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and leave this. We, we've talked a bit about, uh, you know, we. I showed you a bit of stealth. I showed you a bit about sort of like the environmental interactions and all of things like that. Uh, we're gonna go upstairs. This is Aru. He's normally in cat form, but it looks like he's just in person form right now. Bunch of stuff going on uh, in this town. Uh, I don't want to spoil the story or anything, but there's basically like a, you're solving a mystery within the town. Someone was murdered, and I, I spent the better part of the last, you know, 10 hours in this town trying to solve the mystery, talking to NPCs. I just want to show you sort of the 
the breadth of dialogue that can happen. It's there's just a lot of written dialogue for every NPC in the town. Now there's a lot of base NPCs, so you'll see like common civilians or legionnaires, which is the defense uh, unit for the town. And a lot of them will say a lot of the same things. You'll basically just ask them standard things about the area. But special NPCs, which there are, they're just scattered throughout, uh, they'll have a lot of individual dialogue. So I can talk to Arhu, he'll tell me a bit about himself. Uh, he is a wizard, so I can be like, who are you, Arhu? I'm a wizard, guardian, man, beast. Uh, he's a wizard that's basically like a... He's able to polymorph and he prefers cat form. So when I first actually uh, encountered him here in his laboratory, he was disguised as a cat and I clicked on him and then all of a sudden he's talking to me. I'm like, whoa, what the hell? And here's something that's kind of cool. A lot of the normal animals, they will just purr or bark or, you know, moo at you. But you can spend a point into pet, tr uh, pet friends or something like that. You can spend a point to basically a talent point that allows you to communicate with animals. And this can open up new quest lines for you. So there's certain animals within the world that if you speak to them, when you have that talent point, they, they'll have a new quest for you to, to potentially lead you to a special area with loot or you know things like that. Okay, so you can change the subject. Um, let's talk about source hunter business. There's a bunch of stuff I can talk to him about uh, the murder of what's going on and you know what happened the night of the murder and then he's gonna have a whole bunch of different things to say to me. And this is really this is a big part of the reason why I've spent so much time in these towns because I'm just skipping through it right now. I'm not gonna sit here and read all of this stuff to you, but there is just so much dialogue and really i'll I'll just say like <laughs> if you're someone who likes to get immersed with lots of reading, this game has you cut like there is a lot a lot of lot of dialogue to read with all the NPCs I'll just what one thing I do want to quickly show you is uh so we've got people like these like the legionnaires and they will just have some standard stuff all of the legionnaires will have an opinion on these things so if I say, can you tell me about the orcs? This guy will say, oh, these are attacking Cecile right now. Mostly, uh, I just can't comprehend why they'd bother with this place at all. So, But then I can ask another legionnaire about the orcs. Nothing good ever came from the Vile Peaks. So, so she has something else to say about the orcs. Or I could ask uh, this one about the orcs. What does she have to say? One morning, two weeks ago, like, it's, cr it's kind of crazy to me that all of these legionnaires have something different to say about the orcs. Now, I'm sure there's repeating dialogue at one point, but so far, everything I've shown you, all of these legionnaires have been saying different things about the orcs. Okay, this one is finally repeated. So it looks like they've got it looks like they've got a uh, set amount where they will eventually start to repeat. But yeah, every every NPC, be it a commoner or a special NPC, will have things to say. It's just the special NPCs that have a lot more unique dialogue. But as you just saw, even all of the legionnaires will have various things, uh, various opinions about the different ongoings of the town. So this is a legionnaire, and again, they'll they'll tell you about the area, Cecile or Cecile, however you're supposed to pronounce that. They'll talk to you about the Undead Plague, uh, which is one of the threats to this world. Uh, you know, undead zombies and stuff, which we'll be fighting in a moment. We're going to get to combat in a moment. They'll tell you about the Fabulous Five. The Fabulous Five is a guild. It's a guild that I joined. They're basically treasure hunters and fighters, I believe. Uh, tell you about the Legion. And Shields has something to say about the orcs, and looks like there's a repeat right there. But um, And the same thing will go with any of the co vi village commoners. So if I went down to, um, like, the town square right over here there's a bunch of villagers and stuff we can talk to and and they'll have opinions on the various matters as well so what i want to show you next we're going to show you we're going to do one more bit of uh, dialogue discussion before we move into taking a look at the combat in this game um the, there's a relationship between your two main characters okay and that plays out whenever a decision is made so here is a great example of that okay we're going to go into this open this door and as we walk in, oh no, buck, 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 chickens trying to escape. How terrible, okay? And then we can, and then, and then uh, he says, don't let the chicken escape. She's already on the menu for tonight. And I make a decision as Roderick. So Roderick's my first character. I can say, uh, isn't it a chicken's destiny to be eaten? We should catch it and give it back to the cook. So I can say that, all right? So that's the decision I make. I can say, let it live or catch it and give it to the cook. And then it's time for my second main character, whether or not it's Scarlet or something else that you made. And she can agree with you, say, yes, 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 indeed. Cook it, uh, 
and we can have a bite of it later. Or she can say, whoa, whoa wait a minute. I don't want to see this poor chicken here slaughtered. I want him free, free, free. So I can disagree with my first character. And when you're playing this game co-op, because this game does have multiplayer, that'll be an interesting dynamic where you and your friend, whoever you're playing with, can, make, can have an argument about a decision. And then at that point, what will happen is the first character who initiated the conversation can try to sway you or can agree with you. So I can I can try to intimidate, charm, or reason with Scarlet, or I can say fine, I can just throw up my hands and say fine, we'll do it your way, whatever. Now, I want to catch and cook the chicken, so we're gonna try to charm. We're gonna say, chef is gonna make something tasty, maybe he'll give us a nibble for helping him out. And then we can, with her, we can go, I bet you'd make an even tastier roast chicken. Look at the cute little beak, can you really? Plenty of tasty dish, so I can try to uh, go back to him. We'll just say, oh, look at the cute little beak. And then it's time for a face-off. And this is going to be <laughs> a game of rock, paper, scissors. This is how we decide disagreements, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna do a game of rock, paper, scissors between the two to see which side wins. Okay, so it looks like I'm winning so far. And this is what happens whenever you have a disagreement, basically. I mean, can I just go all rock? Is she gonna really do scissors the whole way? I just need one more win. Ah, finally did the paper, I see. All right, let's go with scissors this time. Okay, is she really gonna, this is really, <laughs> this is really kind of ridiculous. There we go, okay, so we ended up winning the argument because we, we disagreed with each other. <laughs> We disagreed with each other, and then we resolved that agreement with rock, paper, scissors. So I get plus one heartless, she gets plus one compassionate, our relationship is adjusted as a result, and he is happy because we helped him catch the chicken. He said, that was close, thank you so much for helping me catch Fidgety Jack. Um, now the first time I went in here, I let the chicken go, and you know what happened then? This was so ridiculous. First time I went in here, I let the chicken go, and he called the guards saying that we were thieves, and then these nearby legionnaires came in and we engaged in combat. Like it, it just switched to the turn-based combat and I had to fight them because I let his chicken go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just think this game's pretty neat. If you're, look, if you're in, in the market for like an old school RPG, I think this game fills that role. And I think it does it pretty well. The, like, just the really old Fallout, Baldur's Gate style, stuff like that. I'm sure there's other RPGs that you can uh, go to. So we've got this main town here, uh, this main square, and there's a bunch of different vendors that we can go up and talk to. Also, any NPC that you have a conversation with, you can barter with as well, even if they don't have anything. You can basically say, okay, I want to sell... So I can say, I want to sell this flat bow, and there's a base price, so I can say, all right, the fair thing is you give me 112 gold, or I can ask her for more. So I can be like, I also want you to give me, I also want you to give me one of your fish. And then I can say, huh? And she's, no, oh, your offer insults me. So she, I get minus one attitude with her. So I can say, all right, I'm sorry, I'll just take the 112 gold, successful trade. Uh, but you can make it so that, People are more likely to agree with you ripping them off uh, based on, again, the stats and stuff that you pick. Now I'm gonna go into the combat. Uh, we've been looking at like the RPG and world interaction for a long time now, but I'm gonna leave the town and we're gonna go take a look at combat. So like I said, playing for 10 hours, I've spent that time in this town. Like, just talk, I mean, you, you, you can see, look at all the time we wasted in one building. We were in one building and just looking at stuff and talking, like there's just so much dialogue and with all the interaction and everything that you can do, it is, I don't know, it is kind of, it's kind of a bit crazy, but also really awesome. Okay, so now we are going to leave town and now we're gonna take a look at the combat. Once again, this is turn-based, turn-based combat. So what's gonna happen is whenever we encounter an enemy, so we've got a few enemies right here, they're level three. You've gotta be very careful, by the way, uh, enemies that are even just a couple levels above you will destroy you. In fact, before we hop into this combat, I want to make sure I'm completely topped off. So I'm going to heal myself up with a couple of my healing abilities. Perfect. Okay, then now we will go ahead and walk and engage in a combat. So we get close enough to the enemies, and then it just seamlessly switches. We are now in the turn-based combat at the top. You can see the order that we're gonna go in, essentially. 
Uh, so it's going to be us three, and then the enemies are going to move uh, right here at the bottom. Uh, based on the position I try to move my character, or depending on what kind of spell I cast, it'll show you how many action points are used up. The green are available, red is how much will be used if you follow through with the action that you're about to do. Um, so what I would actually like to do is I would like to make it rain right here. I'm going to make it rain. And then I'm going to, on the subsequent puddle, I'm going to cast my electric spell. So this is going to pretty much force the enemies to move around it. And what I'm going to do with this is try to funnel them into an area. So I'm going to put one guy right here. Actually, I want him to face this direction. And I'm going to end his turn. I'm going to put the other, other, my other warrior, we're going to put right on the other side of my mage. So the idea here is I'm trying to protect my mage from both fronts. So I'm just going to pass the turn. I'm going to let the enemy move. And they're, they're smart enough most of the time to move around things. But So there we go. So they're moving around that. And I've funneled them into, I funneled them into this area. So now what I can do, I'm gonna sl I've got a few abilities on her. I've got a flare, which does fire damage. Slow current, which will slow a target. A heal. Um, a, st a staff attack. There's my rain. I also have a fortify to give a uh, ally a bone, uh, armor buff. There are scrolls that I can, so I can like summon an else ice elemental scroll if I wanted to. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to slow up this target. So I'm going to cast slow on it. Oops. Slow. And the reason I'm doing this is because my main guy Roderick here has a passive in which he does 50% more damage to slowed targets. So I'm going to pass her turn. And you carry over action points. Any action points you have left when you end a turn will carry over into the next turn. So this allows you to set up big turns with lots of moves. So I slowed this guy. You can see as I mouse over him, it says he is slowed. So now if I hit him with Roderick, Roderick will do 50% more damage. Look at that. Almost one hit this guy, basically. And then I've got enough points to also do my whirlwind attack. Uh, it costs six action points. I've got just enough to do it. And I'm going to cast that because that should finish that guy off. There we go. So one guy down, and now it's time to move on to my other warrior. Since uh, I, I wasn't sure if they were going to try to flank around, looks like they're both moving in the same direction. So I'm going to move her into position over here, and then we were going to pass the turn. I'm going to wait for these guys to move forward. Excellent. Okay, now these two guys are here, so what can I do? Well, there's, a, again, a few different options. I can cast my Minor Heal. There's no no target to do that on, though. I can do my Flare. I can do my Staff of Magus. I can uh, put some Fortify Armor on. Um, why don't I do my Fire Attack? So we're going to do the Fire Attack on... Let's hit the Zombie. Because he is flanked, so he's got minus 10 defense. And then I'm going to pass her turn. And then with Roderick, I'm going to hit this guy. There we go. And he only has one action point left. It's five action points for an attack, so we're going to pass his turn. And then with her, we're going to hit this guy as well. Man, he takes a beating. So we're going to do we got a we got a bunch of action points so we can do a few hits on him and that's that's pretty much that. So we're going to pass the turn. And now it's time for them to do their attacks. So it looks like that zombie gets a couple of hits. This guy gets a couple of hits. But not, not doing too much damage for me. We are even level. Uh, uh, all my characters here are level 3. And these guys are level 3 as well that we're fighting. So, Oh, no. Oh, crap. I stunned my... Oh, no. That's not good. All right. I'm going to heal up uh, Roderick. So these guys were on some water. These guys had the wet debuff. And I accidentally hit them with electricity. <laughs> instead of hitting the zombie. Um, <laughs> so what that did was that stunned them. <laughs> so that's the sort of thing you do have to worry about friendly fire essentially and they are stunned for a couple of turns unfortunately enough um let me move her over here let me do the fire attack to finish that guy off there we go so we'll so we finished the zombie off now these guys are still stunned it's really annoying. <laughs> so yeah, you have you do have again, you have to worry about accidentally disabling your own friends basically, and that's exactly what I did. I'm going to put armor on Roderick since he's the one who's taking the brunt of this assault here. And their stun debuff should be getting off in the next turn, I believe. Um, I believe anyways. I think their stunned debuff will be done right now. There we go. So now they're finally free. Um, let me cast fire on the undead swordsman. 
So yeah, it's turn-based It's turn -based combat based off of action points. You've got the interaction of all the various elements and stuff. And that's basically it. I mean, there's really not much more to say about it beyond that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, reminds me of, you know, it's, it's like sort of like XCOM-y, if you will. Oh, nice. Like XCOM enemy, and it's it's like any turn-based, it's like any turn-based action point-based uh, combat system. It seems, you know, it seems pretty well put together. It seems pretty decent. All right, now that we've taken a look at the combat, I wanted to just talk with you a little bit about just how you approach this game and how it really doesn't hold your hand. So there are quests, there are things that you will be doing. Uh, basically, my merry band of adventurers, the two that I started out with, uh, Roderick as well as Scarlet, we arrived at this town as source hunters trying to solve a mystery. And then in the process of doing that, we've encountered a bunch of different NPCs that have had problems that they wanted assistance with. And I can check the completed. You can see all of these ones that are uh, blacked out here, these black diamonds. These are the ones that I finished. But then there's just a whole bunch of quests that I haven't completed. Now, it's not so simple in that you talk to an NPC and then you have a, a, a point on your map that shows you where to go next. In fact, this game does not do that at all. Now, you can set custom markers when you find something interesting. Now, there are these little squares. These are just basically telling you the names of the houses once you have discovered them. Uh, these things won't show up prior to discovering them. At least it, it hasn't been my experience that that was the case. But I can set a custom marker that says, so for example, right here, um, I could set up a custom marker and we could go like, this is the graveyard, okay? So, because that's where I am. I am inside the graveyard in the town. So we hit accept, and then now we know, okay, we go over here, this is the graveyard. Now, this might be important because we might have a quest that involves us uh, potentially looking for the graveyard. There is this instance where a body went disappearing from a mortician, and we need to try to find that body. You're given hints within the text of conversations that you have with NPCs but you're not given exact locations. You're not giving a arrow. Look, I can just show you an example. So we can take a look, like I've got this undead scourge quest that I found. We found two undead guards who point us in the direction of an abandoned church. And then Aurora asks us to find the source of the undead scourge plaguing Cecile. Neither of these two things right here tell me where to go at all. I have to remember the conversations that I had with the two undead guards and with uh, Aureus in terms of where I should be heading to complete this objective. Now, if I remember where it is, so you could see uh, they pointed us in the direction of the abandoned church, but it doesn't tell you where that direction is right here in your log. This is our journal. We just have to recall that and we have to make notes. Old school, not handholdy, requires you to read the dialogue. And for that reason, I know that there are some people who are just not going to be interested in it. Now, there is a there is a keeping of the dialogue that you've had, but yeah, have fun filtering through this. <laughs> like, this is all the conversations that I've had since we began playing this game. Everything. It's kind of crazy. Um, there is the map again. What you're going to want to do is you're probably going to want a notepad and you're probably going to want to set custom markers very often. I think that that's going to be the best thing. There's also keeping of recipes. So this game does have crafting and I did want to show you that. Uh, it's got a very neat crafting system in that it's intuitive and you're just supposed to combine things. So here's a great example. I've got a branch. Okay. I have got nine inch nails. I'm going to combine the branch with the nine inch nails. Oh, did that not work? It's supposed to, what did it say? Okay, there we go. Combine the branch with the nine inch nails. You can see you're putting it together. And now we have a branch with nine inch nails, which is more damage than the branch by itself. Legitimately, that's the crafting system. Now you do have to specialize in crafting in order to craft certain things. So Scarlet here, uh, she has got one point into crafting, whereas uh, Medora doesn't have any points into crafting. Roderick doesn't have any points into crafting, so neither one of them can craft. I think you can also put like two branches together to make a staff. You can put an orange in the glass and make yourself orange juice, which will give you a drink that will that will give you buffs. Um, there's also there's also blacksmithing with Roderick. I've put some points in blacksmithing, and I can I have to take him basically to an anvil 
and, or a sharpening stone, and I can sharpen up my weapons to make them stronger. It's a very intuitive and interesting crafting system. I just showed you something very basic and, you know, combining this branch with the nails, with the nine-inch nails to make a, uh, a nine-inch nail branch thing. Uh, there's also a bunch of secrets in this game. So uh, let me talk about not holding your hand. For some people, that's going to be annoying as hell, but for people who are looking for an immersive experience... I think that's kind of cool. Like, this is, again, old school RPG. You got to pay attention. You got to pay attention to all the conversations you have. You got to pay attention to everything. You got to read signs. The graveyard. Grave diggers beware. Seriously, beware. Um, I found a secret here. I was in this graveyard, and I dug up this grave because this dog over here was expressing interest in this area. He said, there's something he wants to show you, and he was wagging his tail doing circles. So I dug up the grave, and then I clicked on it, and all of a sudden, I'm in an underground cavern. Now, this is something that I would have never found if I did not dig up that grave. Again, there's no, it was, there was nothing obvious about it. It looked like all the other graves. In fact, initially, I almost didn't even do it because I don't want to be a, I don't want to dig up people's graves. Like, that makes me feel like a scumbag. And maybe I'm going to lose, you know, maybe I'm going to lose uh, a certain reputation with some people in the area or whatever. <laughs> this game is just really neat. I think it does a lot of really cool things. Looks like we got another fight on our hands here. All right, these are just some level two characters. We're level three, so I'm fairly confident in our ability to take them out. Uh, let's do my favorite, which is the Rainstorm Electricity. Let's see if we can get that puddle right on their heads. Sometimes in combat, I like to switch to the overhead camera mode. Oh, that is perfect. All right, that is perfect. We're gonna get we're gonna get a stun on these guys. Beautiful. We got a stun on one of them. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to switch the camera back over here. Yeah, I just think this game does a lot of really neat things, and I've really, really had a really fun time with it. For these 10 hours that I've put in thus far, it's been incredibly enjoyable. So uh, right now, as of this point, I am definitely, like, I could say I can recommend this game. This is... This has been a good time for, for me so far. I have not nearly finished it. I've just barely left the starter town. You know what I mean? But from what I've seen so far, uh, if you're looking for an old school RPG experience, this thing, I feel like it absolutely delivers. I can't do my one. Don't have enough action points. All right, let's, um, let's hit this guy right here. See, notice I can't hit this guy because this object is in the way. So, because, because of this wagon here, I can't hit this guy, but I can hit that guy. So we're going to throw a spell right at him. Bam, and that's going to re-electrocute the ground. It didn't end up popping another stun, but that's fine. And I don't want Roderick or anyone to walk through this. Yeah, the puddle completely encompasses this uh, ground, so I don't want him to take any damage walking through it. But I am going to put these guys closer just so that they are prepared for when the other skeletons move forward. Oh, and then they have a range cast. They have got a caster back there, too. And then that now that guy's stunned. All right, so we're going to move my caster a little bit more forward. I'm going to start casting flares, and we're going to hit. Now that the uh, electricity is not on the ground, so I can f safely have my melee characters move through, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to walk up to him. We're going to hit him in the face just like that, and one guy dispatched of. And then I'm going to... I'm going to hold on to his remaining action points to pass his turn. And we can have her move up. She's going to move up and hit him now. So turn-based combat. Lots of reading. Lots of dialogue. Uh, let's have her charge, too. I'm going to have her charge past. Ready? So she's going to charge past these guys, dealing damage to them as well. Beautiful. And then I can have her turn around with her last action point. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, turn-based combat. Lots of reading. Lots of paying attention required. And a fun experience if that's the sort of thing that you're interested in. I'll be honest with you. This isn't the game that I would I would have always said would have interested me. Because I would say that in many ways I can be very impatient. But right now this is just an experience that has really spoke to me. Like I've enjoyed taking my time. I've enjoyed the fact that I've spent most of my time just exploring the world. And not even... It's not non-stop combat. Maybe it can be if you approach it that way, but for me it hasn't been, and I've been okay with it. I really have. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Checking out Divinity Original Sin. The game's going to be launching in like a week from now. Look at this guy. Now, you can sneak up on people, okay? So watch this. Ready? Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, checking out Divinity Original Sin. Available soon. I'm going to keep playing it. 
because I'm having a good time. I'm also going to sneak up here. So I can sneak up. You see, he's, you see, he's got his vision cone, but when he's not looking at me, I can la launch a fireball at him. Bam! <laughs> that is awesome. All right, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys have a great day. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get back to playing the Divinity. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Oh no, that's no good. I'll see you guys next time. There'll probably be some more coverage of this game from me. Seems very likely, so stay tuned. This guy's too far for me to hit him with anything. What about now? There we go. Oh, wait a second. Crap, is he not even taking any damage? Oh, because he's a Scorcher, he is immune. Oh, that's no good.